Well, from ZCast and the world, I'm Square Golf from ZK Research, and here at Arthur Ashe Stadium at the U.S. Open. Uh, IBM's a big sponsor here. I, uh, obviously, the USTA used a lot of AI in their tennis, but I'm going to talk to Miriam Ashuri, uh, VP of Products for IBM, about AI and, and, um, and some of the stuff they're doing with agents. And so, uh, before we get into that, though, maybe just a quick intro on yourself and what you do with IBM. Absolutely. I'm running governance and AI for IBM. So, that's a big job. What does that entail? <laughs> so we are focusing on enterprise needs and what they need in production and scale. Exploring the use cases with them, figuring out the technology that they need to supply them, educating them about the risk associated with them and how we can go and, in and help to improve that adoption rate for them. Yeah, and when we were prepping for this, I asked you what do you want to talk about you said agents. And that's a big topic. And uh, I, I'm curious, in your conversation with customers, where are we in this whole agentic world? When I when I look at the media, it's all everybody talks about. But when I talk to most customers, they're thinking about it. They like the idea, but they're not really sure what to do. What What's your sense of where customers are? Very good questions. If you look into the numbers, only 16 people, 16 percent of the market have moved to production and escape. So the rest of the market is still at the exploration phase versus going to POCs versus going to production and seeing the real value. Why? What's going why? on in the market? Yeah. <laughs> so so there, there are two whys that we can look into. Why the adoption rate is raw, low and why there is excited, excitement around agents. Let me start with the second one. Why right. agents? Why it's creating a lot of excitement in the market? 2023 was the year of exploration. Everyone was looking for a wow factor, aha moments. The primary use cases that we saw in enterprise were centered around really top six use cases. Information extraction, uh, custom uh, summarization, classification, content grounded question and answering, content generation, code generation. So if you have a use case that it can be accelerated with those, you're golden. Yeah. But that's just a small portion of enterprise use cases, right? That's why we started seeing the companies and enterprises really struggling to see the real value of Gen AI. With 2024, we started seeing LLMs taking action. And that was the window of opportunities for enterprise to bring that acceleration on those use cases to every single corner of their enterprise, including the legacy systems through something that we call tool calling or function calling, right? So that's really the trigger of excitement for the market that, hey, Gen AI acceleration can be anywhere across the enterprise world. I love that. Then we started seeing, oh, agents, now we are talking about thinking mode, reasoning capabilities, that's additional compute. You know, additional compute translates to additional increased latency. Yeah. That's your response time. Power. Power, yeah. energy consumption, carbon footprint, and it translates to cost for the scale of enterprise. So lots of efforts are on optimizations. What does it mean to go at a scale with agents managing all the factors that we talked about, but at the same time, responsible implementation of AI, right? We are talking about the risk associated with LLMs that now are amplified because agents can potentially leak data. Agents can connect to external services. Agents can go and run, delete some part of your code base, right? So things can go really wrong, and it's essential for enterprises to understand what those risks are and how to mitigate them before they are able to go to production and escape. Yeah, I've, I'm also seeing a lot of shadow AI use cases here where uh, users want to use them, and they're using these consumer-grade ones, and they're putting company data in them, and it's yeah. creating a lot of risk for companies. Uh, and your, your point on the models is that you, I know the granite models in fact, that IBM thing, Arvind Krishnan, your CEO, is very emphatic that the future of AI is not more large models, but small models that are more purpose-built. And uh, you mean, the whole Granite family is built around that concept, right? Yeah. Exactly. Small models, but also open, because you want to own the OSP to be able to tune these models. Yeah. The value of the small models is you fine-tune it on your proprietary data, the data about your users, your domain-specific data, to create something differentiated from the market that delivers the performance that you need for your target use case for a fraction of the cost. That's basically the story. So you need to own the IP, it needs to be open, it needs to be commercially permissible when it comes to licenses, and you need to be able to trust the model. Does the company 
We stand behind it. For granted, we stand behind the models. Does the company provide visibility into how the model was trained or the data engineering pipeline? And that's really the core to the value of that. Yeah. And uh, so for people watching this, if they're thinking about it, they're excited about it, where is a good starting point? You listed some use cases, but if there was a couple of places they should start, is it, I hear contact center being used a lot, uh, you know, for knowledge workers, maybe even being able to use it for information on people. Where do you see the, the low hanging fruit that's high reward, low risk, or is, or is that, does that, does that not exist? Well, I, I, I would change the question a little yeah. bit. I would say that be curious. Okay. Information comes from everywhere. You don't need to chase the latest technology. You need to have a point of view of how it's going to help your business instead of chasing the best and latest because the market is evolving rapidly yeah. and you're just going to end up with fatigue and being exhausted. Chasing so that's been a big problem for companies. They've told me they've been ready to move ahead with the project and then a model changes and then they yeah. load the new model. And then as soon as they load the new model on them, the model changes again and they can't keep up. Right? Exactly. So here's the thing. And I've been telling my customers, the foundations and non-negotiables don't change for you. Like, you know your problem state, you know the use case, you know the risk level that you can tolerate. The technology only gets better. So you have to be agile and nimble to be able to always pull the best of the technologies inside to your processes to be able to take advantage of that. So my, my advice for the enterprises is look inside, inside your org to see what is a good use case and problem that can benefit from there versus, hey, I need two agents by the end of the year yeah. <laughs> looking for a use case to apply that to. And the second one, change your processes to be nimble because otherwise you can't take advantage of the best of the market. Yeah. And um, one of the other things that comes up is skills, right? Uh, everyone's worried that AI is going to take jobs. And in, in actuality, I do believe it takes some jobs, but I also think it creates other jobs. And I'm just curious as to, when you talk to customers, how they're thinking through the skills transaction? Well, AI is going to change all of our lives, independent from the role. I started changing, uh, using AI in my job, and I feel like when you learn how to get AI to work You get for so you, much more done. You feel empowered, yeah. you feel enabled. I feel like I can do way more the stuff that I've been working on. Actually, we ran a study. We talked to 1,000 AI application developers across the U.S. that are building AI applications. And we asked them, hey, do you use AI-assisted coding? About half of them, 40-something percent, they said occasionally they use it. They are like, perfect, how much time saving are you getting out of that? The majority of them, they said one to two hours. Four percent, they said about six hours. What does it tell you? It tells you if you have figured out how to use AI effectively to get it work to you, you can revolutionize the role that you can play, free up your time to do more. So it's not about taking job, it's like empowering people to do way more and spend time on that. What that in fact, I read that in the IBM Business Value uh, study. In fact, that underscores the point of uh, when people say it's not AI that's going to take your job, it's the person that knows how to use AI that's going to take, take the job. They're going to take the job of yeah. the ones that are not using yeah. AI effectively. Yeah, it's a little bit like you wouldn't hire an accountant that doesn't know how to use Excel, right? It's just, it's a tool. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, yeah, just uh, last question then. Uh, from a, um, a security and governance standpoint, what's some advice around there? I know everyone's excited about AI, but nobody wants their data to be, you know, used to build these uh, to train these models and put on the internet. So uh, what are you advising customers there on how to make sure that they're protected? Very good question because only about 19 percent of the market today based on IDC stats is using looking at observability when it comes to AI. Is that right? Only 19? Not 99 percent, 19 percent. What does it tell you? It tells you that enterprise hasn't yet moved to production. They are still exploring because if you can't move to production with all the risk associated with agents and things can go wrong without having that observability in place. So I, I, I expect That's to see a lot more. Part. It is. Yeah. Um, I feel like there is going to be a lot more push on transparency and traceability of actions for agent behaviors. There is going to be a lot more push on optimization of the agent behavior. Like, for example, managing the thinking mode. If you turn it on, and you ask the model, where is the capital of the Paris, uh, France? It's not going to just say Paris. It's going to think about, OK, so France is a country in Europe. And yeah. basically, it burns tokens 
for the scale of enterprise that translates to cost, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So optimization plays a very important role in addition to observability. And, and is that one of the big value adds IBM brings? Because you've got, while there's lots of model providers, you got the models, you also have the security tools and the observability tools. Yes. And you really take a full stack approach, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And, and specifically for managing risk and governance, you are looking for four buckets. The first one is pre-tree model, granite model that you mentioned. It's like the models that we can stand behind. The second bucket is automatically document the lineage of who touched the model or the agent at what point to do what. So you would be able to, for the purpose of auditability, go back and trace back to see what happened. The third one is the guardrails that we put in place. Guardrails like detecting PII, detecting toxic information, detecting uh, information before they are going, going to the agent and detecting information before they come out. We are also looking into risk and compliance looking into asking questions from the business is this an applicable practical state use case that it's okay to apply ai to that situation and if so regulations for different geographics and and basically having a solution versus just jumping on implementing it out all right well thanks for the little uh, primer here on the agenda absolutely anything else you want to add <laughs> just be curious <laughs> nimble be, be curious and nimble, nimble. that's the key and focus on your problems, yeah. not just chasing the technology. And, but don't forget about security and the compliance, right? So, yeah. uh, and now we're going to watch a little tennis later, right? Absolutely. So, it's going to be a fun night. Yeah. So, from Arthur Ashe Stadium on behalf of Mirla Shuri, I'm CS Carol Allen from ZK Reaching. Thanks for watching. Uh, give us a like and also hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time. Max episode of ZCast. Thanks, Miriam. Thank you.